supposing you've just watched the tutorial to that shows you how to make this scene and you want to create a similar depth of field effect in your for your own scene but you don't have access to a very powerful computer is there a way around that can you get the same effect without having to spend hours rendering a premium effect well yes you can otherwise there wouldn't be any point to this tutorial so having answered my own question there rather fruitlessly um, I'll show you how to go about creating more or less the same effect without having to do a lot of number crunching still set the scene up in exactly the same way but when it comes to your premium options you only render at the very lowest setting that's four rays per pixel this in turn will mean that your render will render a lot faster um, the downside is you get a lot of noise in the image which on the face of it means your image isn't going to look very good but we can sort of get around that uh, it's going to require a bit of post work and uh, the use of another piece of software so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Paint Shop Pro 8 um, because I know how to use it but I'm sure it's possible in other uh, software I mean it wasn't very expensive I think it was five pounds for the full license so but it should be a facility that's available in quite a lot of different paint packages though the process might vary I can only really show you for the one I know so I'm going to save this scene now this rather grainy scene as so oh, grainy so that's my grainy image and I'm going to paint shop pro now and I'm going to load that image and I'm going to go adjust blur and blur more and by blurring it that removes the noise so that's that's good that's got rid of that issue but by the same token the things that are now supposed to be in focus the things that makes the depth of field really look nice it's, it's gone it, everything's out of focus it's just things that some things are more out of focus than others the background so what I really need to do is find a way of getting this bit of the image sharp again unfortunately Bryce can help us out here if we now go into the render options and select regular rendering and choose distance mask we can produce a grayscale image that relates to how far away things are in the scene so you can see the outline of these um, book things and, and a bit of the outline of the gravel as it goes into the distance so we'll save that as uh, distance mask right and one final thing we're going to need so we'll go back to render options now and I'll just uh, turn the distance mask off again no mask there you go right and that will allow me just to render a sharp image so what we're going to do is we're going to steal a bit of this image and combine it with the blurred image using the paint package so I'll let that render in the background and we'll get round to processing our I'll just shrink that down out of the way our, our distance mask so here's our distance mask now in order for the mask to work what I need to do is arrange for the bits that should be in sharp focus to be white and, and, and that's just going to be the part of the masking process so if we go to adjust brightness and contrast curves I'll just reset this filter so you can see what we're aiming for here is that bit to be dark that bit to be dark and then some grey transitions and then a white bright white section that's going to be our masks job so if I put a point in the middle lift it to the top and put it put that curve down that's that's getting us close you can see now that's the the light points moved forward a bit there and then I move move it across here so I'm aiming to get that spider there the back of that spider that is brightest so that's more or less there and if I add another point just by clicking on this line that seems to be the way it works and then drag this down I can I can by moving this into the the the, the, the highest point I can sharpen the contrast in that image so here we go and they're getting somewhere like now I'll just try and urge that along a little bit it's a little bit fiddly working on this there you go right so this is what I was aiming for I want a light section because we're going to use this mask to mask in the sharpest section of the image so I say OK to that now this is a little bit noisy because I used 48-bit um, dithering so what I'll do is I'll adjust and I'll
blur the mask now. So right, there's our background image, the blurry bit. If we go back to Bryce, you can see that's rendered out, that's our sharp image. So I'll save that as sharp. Go back to my paint package and then I'll load in the sharp image. Right, so now I'll take this image and copy Control C and then Control L on this one allows me to overlay the sharp image over the blurred image. You can see if I just hide the sharp image now you can see the difference between the two. And the final thing to do with the sharp image selected is go to layers, new mask layer from image and I pick out my distance mask and go OK. And what that does is it places it's, it's, it's masked the sharp bits in over the blurred image where the blurred image was a bit too blurred in the in the areas where it should be sharp and that's uh, sort of recreated the effect I was looking for so I'll just save that and that, that, will, uh, that will flatten down all the layers and then if we go back to our original image which looks like that so that's the original one with done with the premium effects depth of field set at 256 rays per pixel that took half an hour to render and I've got my, my combined image okay this is the combined image and I hope you can see there isn't that much difference and that's taken so far with an explanation and full rendering on my machine about six and a half minutes uh, obviously it will take longer on slower machines because obviously they're doing this to show you how to, to uh, to, to render this out on slow machines, but most of the time I spent was actually working on the the filters and the masking rather than the rendering. So it should be considerably f you know, considerable time time saving for uh, for you if you have a slower computer and you want to try still try and achieve this effect in uh, Bryce 7.1 Pro. Okay, so I hope that's uh, helpful to you and uh, you enjoyed that tutorial.